These are some strange money tips that I've used personally to keep my savings rate between 60 to 70% over the past decade. Long before hacking was a thing, you just had to be a little bit strange and do things like the following. Number one is view money as time. This was a massive game changer for me personally. When you view that new gadget in terms of the amount of extra time you have to work to pay for it, it changes your desire for that gadget in a lot of cases. The question isn't, what does it cost? The question becomes, how many extra hours do I have to work to actually pay for it? And for me, bigger picture, how many hours does this set back my retirement date? So let's say if you make $20 an hour and you want that new iPhone 15, for example, it will cost you about a thousand bucks or 50 hours worth of work to buy. You basically just delayed your retirement by a full week, actually a little bit more than a full week. Now that doesn't sound like a lot until you start doing this with everything that you purchase. I mean, you want that new car that cost you on average $48,000? That sets you back 60 weeks or more than a year in order for you to buy it. And do the math on buying that house that you want so bad. That can add a decade or more to your working life alone. When you view money as hours worked, you see how quickly your spending adds up to you actually working until you're dead instead of retiring. The second one is to just be weird. Once I got past the initial social pressures and became kind of, you know, the weird guy or whatever, I suddenly saw my wealth building journey completely skyrocket. I was weird for not buying a $6 coffee twice a day or even once a day. I was weird for driving an old used car. I was weird because I didn't have cable at all. I was weird to house hack and buy a duplex that then had my tenants paying the mortgage for me. I was weird for starting more side hustles instead of watching football on Sundays. And seriously guys, the Cowboys were winning Super Bowls the last time I paid real attention to the NFL and that was a long time ago. For some reason, society has shifted significantly to where now the person spending every dime and then taking on debt to buy even more and wasting every minute of their life on non-value add activities is now normal and the person who is prudent with their money and grinding after hours is a weird guy. Get comfortable being weird and it's amazing how much money you can save and how quickly your wealth grows. So on to number three, don't consume ads. Seriously, how many times have you said, I don't need anything else until you see that ad for a new car or new gym clothes or a new gadget or whatever that will make your life easier and now you need just that one more thing suddenly. We've all been there, we've all done that, we've all experienced that. Heck, even signing up for an email list to get a discount because you know you're trying to save money and do better can be an actual trap. Basically then you've ensured that you're gonna get their latest sales ad a few months later where suddenly you need more of their products that you didn't need just a few months prior when you bought the last product. And that is by design, my friends. Billions are spent on making ads that make you wanna buy. There are massive scientific studies that have been done and continue to go on and continue to happen to basically scientifically figure out how to separate you from your money. So honestly, if we're all being truthful here, it's almost impossible to win when they know exactly how to trigger the internal and external responses that make it too visceral, too tempting for you to resist and you're forced to buy almost. Oh, and get this, the average person sees 4,000 to 10,000 ads a day every single day. There is bound to be one that gets through even the toughest consumer out there. The only way to win at this is to not even see the ad in the first place. And here's exactly how you do that. Get that discount code, but then send that email mailer once you kind of use that code to junk or unsubscribe from it or whatever the heck you need to do. And don't watch TV, which is actually better for you anyways. But if you have to watch TV guys, at least mute it and you know watch a video like this one instead during the commercials. And don't even bother reading the sales flyers or anything else that comes in the mail or anything that's out there you can pick up. Don't go shopping at all except for essentials and make a list before you ever go to the store and stick to it so you don't fall for all the marketing that happens inside of every store you enter. They're actually designed to get you to spend more money once you're in there. I agree, you can't avoid them all, but the more you avoid, the more money you will save. And the final strange money saving tip is to not buy today, but wait exactly one week. Now, I'm not talking about groceries here, guys, and having you starve for a week to just save money, although that would actually work in terms of building wealth, but that's no good if you aren't healthy enough to actually enjoy that wealth. But if you see a new pair of shoes or the latest gadget that you want or you think you need or whatever the case is, don't give in and buy it right then and there. Just decide to mark it on your calendar to wait a week and then purchase it. And many times you will find that during that week, you don't really need it anyways. And maybe in that time you decided to use tip number one and figure out how many hours at work it will cost you to buy it. 
And now it doesn't seem worth it, I don't know, at least not nearly as much worth it as it did in the moment when you were looking at it. Kind of that feeling is kind of passed over and kind of your more logical part of your brain has moved forward and you're thinking about it. And if your boss was a jerk that week that you're waiting, it may actually take away any desire to buy that if it means you have to work just one hour extra with that complete idiot that is your boss. And more importantly, you probably saved yourself from owning something that you didn't need anyways. And if you didn't know, looking poor can actually make you rich, which we talk about in this video right here. Now, I agree our system is broken and this channel is about showing you the real truth behind finance, retirement and entrepreneurship. So make sure you subscribe whether you're 25 or 65. This applies to you and you're going to grow from it. So thank you for watching the video and you have a great one.